Howdy folks, Colin Lay here with Lay Roots. Lay Roots is a great asset protection law firm where we focus on helping people avoid stupid lawsuits. Today I wanted to talk about why we don't recommend land trusts for our clients. But before we get there, if you have questions about setting up your asset protection plan, you can visit livemorecarefree.com you can schedule a free 30-minute chat with one of our attorneys. Again, that's livemorecarefree.com. Okay, so land trusts. You've probably heard of them if you've been researching about asset protection, especially if you're involved in real estate investment. So the basic idea of a land trust is it is an entity that holds real estate for people. Essentially, it's an entity to own real estate instead of owning it in your personal name. Now, the idea is that you can set up a land trust, you can own your real estate, and then you set it up so the trust benefits an LLC. The idea is to create some sort of asset protection for your real estate investments. But we don't really see them as a, a good solution, a good tool or tactic for protecting your real estate, for protecting yourself from stupid lawsuits. So let's talk about why. The first reason I'd say is that it's not going to accomplish, properly accomplish, one of the main goals that people have for setting up a land trust. There is a thing called a due on sale clause, and I think we've done another video, a couple of videos about it, and I'll try to pop a link up there to that video. But essentially a due on sale clause is part of a mortgage, uh, the language of a mortgage document. The lender is saying to you, if you basically transfer a property out of your name and into another entity, then the bank, the lender has the right to call the note, basically make you pay off the entire mortgage and an accelerated fashion, so immediately or you know in the next 60 days, something like that. So that puts people in a bind. They don't wanna own real estate personally because then it's at risk for loss from lawsuits, but then they can't put it into an LLC or business entity because that would trigger that due on sale clause. There are certain exemptions to that lender's ability to call in a note to exercise that due on sale clause. So there's a federal law that says, under certain circumstances, if you transfer real estate into um, another entity or another person, then the lender is not allowed to call in the note. They can't exercise that due on sale clause. And so one of those exemptions is if you transfer real estate into a trust. So that's the idea. That's where the land trust comes into. You transfer the property into the land trust, then the lender is unable to uh, force you to pay off the note. Their hands are basically tied. And then you turn around and you privately transfer your the beneficial interest that you have in that trust to an LLC or another entity. And the idea is that if somebody sues the trust, sues you, they'll have to go to the LLC for some reason, the idea is that the liability will flow to the beneficiary. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. But this process of transferring to a land trust and then changing the trust so that an LLC is a beneficiary actually violates the due on sale clause and falls outside of that federal exemption. The thing is, it just it happens privately, so the lender doesn't find out about it. You know, if they look in the, the county recorder's office, they could see that a trust owns the property or they don't see kind of behind the scenes that you then altered the trust so that an LLC is the beneficiary. The thing is to have the protection that federal law that prohibits the due on sale clause from being triggered, you have to remain as a beneficiary of the trust. So essentially the person who benefits from the trust, if there's any change 
in the beneficial interest of the trust, which is what happens in the typical land trust scenario, then you're not protected by that federal statute. The lender is free to call in a note to exercise their right and the due on sale clause. So it comes down to then on personal preferences. When we discuss this issue with clients, we talk about it. Most of our clients don't want to be doing kind of sneaky things. They want to follow the rules. I think I'm a pretty big rule follower. I guess I must end up working with people who are also rule followers. They want to make sure they're doing everything properly and that, you know, something's not going to uh, sneak up on them and, you know, bite them in the ass later. Other people might be perfectly comfortable um, doing this kind of behind the scenes violation of their due on sale clause. Their reasoning is nobody will find out, or if they're going to find out, they could quickly switch it back and get rid of that change and make it so everything is proper and um, within the bounds of that due on sale exemption. So it's really up to you, but um, why we don't recommend them for one reason is that if your goal is to not violate your due on sale clause from your mortgage, you're technically not working around that if you do the land trust and then change to LLC combination. So that's one reason. Thanks for watching. Tomorrow we will make another video about the other reasons why we don't recommend land trusts for our clients. If you found this video helpful, please do us a solid. Hit that like button. Consider subscribing up above there. One of those buttons will do it. Thanks.